James Harden is opting into his contract in Philadelphia <clears throat> and requesting a trade out of Philadelphia. So very, very short-lived duel between Harden and Embiid. Again, no conference finals appearances. A lot of chokes. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, James Harden is going to be on. This is his fourth team in four years, right? Houston, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Philly. Philly. Yeah, yeah. This fourth is team in four seasons. From a good player too. It's like it's not like he's some journeyman. Like he's a he was performing really, really well. Even this year, he led the league in assists. So it's not mm -hmm. like he had like a crazy bad year. And I know in the playoffs, like it was kind of bad the way it went out. But he still had two forty point games. He had he had stole the game one, even put them in a better position to win the series. So the market for James Harden should be pretty high. But it is kind of crazy how in four years from a former MVP, you're on your fourth different team. Yeah, it uh, it's weird to see. I think someone put out a graphic where I think he's now is the current leader in the since the two thousands in trade requests. <laughs> don't, uh, let's keep a track of that. I don't know. It was it was kind of a joke list, but it was like he requested out of Houston, he requested out of Brooklyn, and now he's requesting out of Philly. So three trade requests in about four seasons time. Um, so the 76ers are going to have a, a very interesting offseason, even more so than we, we thought they were going to. Um, the first and biggest, biggest rumor that's been going on ever since the news broke is that the Clippers are expected to be a top team of interest in looking to land James Harden, as well as the New York Knicks. What do you think about either of those two teams landing a guy like James Harden? I think I love the Clippers fit. Um, I'm trying to put my Lakers bias aside, you know how that go. But if I'm just obviously looking at it from a basketball standpoint, I like the Clippers fit because they need a point guard. They need someone who can set up Paul George, Kawhi, just run the offense a little bit better than, honestly, any point guard they've had in the past, I don't know, what, four years? Ever since Kawhi and Paul George has been there, it seems like they never had a real point guard. A lot of their guards have been, like, score first past second type guard so James Harden going there you know he can play along other superstars you know he can obviously run your offense he led the league in assists last year he can set up the guys like I said the, your shooters around your shooters around them Kawhi Leonard Paul George so fit wise I think yeah I think it's a great fit the problem again it's still going to be health because you know Kawhi is never healthy Paul George is never mm -hmm. healthy so that's still going to be the problem but if we're just talking about a basketball standpoint and you're not trying to break it down and break up the Kawhi, the Kawhi Paul George like little tandem they got going on. Add in James Harden, that that could be real real scary for everyone in the West. So we always say if they stay healthy, but if they get James Harden and they stay healthy, legitimately are a top contender in the West. But so the the Knicks, uh, I'll, I'll let you talk about the Clippers first. The Knicks, I got, I don't know how I feel about that one yet. Yeah, I I said even this year like. My dark horse to win the West, again, if they could stay healthy, was the Clippers. The team always had, they had the depth. It always was just, can we get Kawhi and PG? We can't do one of them. And <laughs> ended up, you can't even get either of them in the playoffs for mm -hmm. more than game one. Um, so health, like you said, is always going to be the issue there. But the team as it was this year, I thought, was constructed to be a legitimate title contender. And if they can add James Harden to that, Obviously, they would have to offload a lot of contracts. I think they would have to get off of um, Terrence, Mann, Terrence Mann, Robert Covington. Um, I think Batum's contract as well, all to just make the money fit to be able to get Harden in. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, you lose a bit of depth there. But um, again, with that much talent, you're going to be able to pull in one or two vets because people are going to see this is a ring-chasing opportunity the same way that um, right. teams look to do that in the past with the Nets or the Warriors a few years ago. So um, I'm not too concerned in that front because, again, when you stack the deck that heavily, you're going to be able to try to pull in some some veteran talent there. So um, I think the Clippers is a really interesting fit. I think Sixers fans are not going to be too happy if that trade goes through because, to your point, I don't think we would see Paul George being moved in that deal. I think the mm -hmm. Clippers would try to do everything they can to form a big three around those two. Um, because in my head, 
I think this raises legitimate questions on <clears throat> if Joel Embiid is going to stay in Philly. And not to say that they've done wrong by him. He's always had a competitive roster ever since they really jumped and made that leap. Mm-hmm. When it was, you know, you had, you've had the, the fully grown process 76ers with him and Ben. You add in Jimmy, you have JJ on that team. It was a really good team. Right, you lose Jimmy, you get Tobias, right? <laughs> you bring in James Harden and you ship out Ben Simmons. Like, they always are constantly cycling through guys. Nothing is just working. And a lot of that can be attributed to the on-court shortcomings of their stars that were on the team in the playoffs. And so I don't put as much blame on the front office. To me, I thought getting James Harden in the first place was not the best option for them at the time. But again, that goes back to how we both view building teams is why do we always go so hard on star ta- star power, star talent, when you could have flipped somebody like you know Ben Simmons, kept guys like Seth Curry, um, and maybe gotten more complimentary pieces around Joel Embiid and you have a really built-out roster that way. Again, it's tough to win this league with just one star, but when you do have the MVP, like some people can rise to the occasion. You already got Tobias Harris on the roster. According to his dad, he'd, I'll make him just sit in the corner anyway. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. he would be a little bit more open in that offense. And I would just like to see them go that route instead of always trying to make the big name splash player. But... Um, Look, they did. We see where that resulted them, and here they are about to, to move James Harden off. So, um, yeah, that's that's how I feel about the fit with the Clippers. But pivoting over to the Knicks side of things, I understand why, right? Like, they missed out on Donovan Mitchell. They hit the one of the biggest home runs, probably the best signing in free agency last year in the Jalen Brunson contract. Right, you bring in Josh Hart. Um Fit is great. Mitchell Robinson's had a great last year. Julius Randle, whatever you think of him in the the playoffs or him as a player in general, all NBA, all star player this past year. You bring in James Harden, that is a very, very, very good core unit. Top three core in the East, easily, mm-hmm. easily, maybe top two. Like you, there's arguments to be made about between them, <clears throat> the Celtics, and the Bucks. They, they they then live in that conversation if they're able to land a guy like James Harden. Right. But at the same time, what does their offense look like bringing James Harden in? What is that then? Granted, we do know what Jalen Brunson can do as a secondary ball handler or even just playing with another ball handler because he the reason he even got the bag in, in New York is because of how well he played in the playoffs with Luka. So I'm not as concerned there. Again, it just goes to what would you have to give up in this deal to get James Harden? How does your team then look? How much of your depth do you have to give up to bring in a a top guy in talent? Um, Again, to make the money match, you're going to have to move some larger contracts. Does R.J. Barrett stay? Does Obi Toppin stay? Can you keep a guy like Emmanuel quickly? Some of that has to do with what the 76ers are going to look to do because – you know, if you're going and bringing in some of the young talent that the, the Knicks have and guys like Quinn Grimes and IQ, even guys like, you know, Miles McBride, whatever, um, how does that fit Joel Embiid's timeline? Right. This could All of this could launch a crazy domino effect, not just in the East, but in the NBA as a whole with massive shakeup. So I think the fit on the, the Clippers is a little bit better just because of, A, the... The higher star power that they do have with Kawhi and PG, the continuity that they all have, um, and then bringing James Harden into that, um, they still would have a good amount of depth on their roster, even if they do trade off of guys like Covington and Batum, and I'm confident that they can sign vets. The New York fit, I don't know, I just like what they have going with who they have right now a lot. Exactly. That I feel like bringing Harden in might mess that rhythm in the offense up that they had um but again at the end of the day i think that if you paired julius randall jalen brunson and james harden together we are at least in the conversation with what the celtics have with 
Tatum, Brown, Porzingis, and what the Bucks have, and Giannis, Drew, and potentially Chris Middleton, who we'll get to later in the in the episode. But but what do you think about the Knicks fit with Harden? I'm curious to see how they would fit on the court, just because. I don't know, it's tough because in my head, James Harden seems like a point guard now. We forget that James Harden actually, like, majority of his career was a shooting guard. Um, Because he's played played point guard for, it seems like, the past, what, four years, basically. But um, when we seen him in that shooting guard role, it was mainly just ISO. I got the ball, uh, high usage player, and I'm just going one-on-one. So I'm curious to see how it would work, him playing alongside Jalen Brunson. Um... Talent-wise, yeah, they would be a good team. Again, I would have to see what they would give up in order to get James Harden. But, yeah, they would be a good team. The only thing that concerns me is, like, i am be honest, in the regular season, I think they would be one of the top teams. But come postseason, we have two guys on the team who I don't really trust in the playoffs. I don't trust Julius Randle in the playoffs at all. Mm-hmm. And at this point, how can you trust James Harden in the playoffs? As, as great of regular season that he's had, we've seen time and time again that when it comes to postseason, it's, he's not that same player. So, um. That I think I think it'd be interesting. Like I said, talent wise, it would be good. James Harden, I think he can adapt and play another way. Like obviously he changed his whole game and transitioned to point guard. So he can play multiple different ways. I'll be interested to see how it works, but the playoffs really does concern me as far as them stepping up right there. But like I said, the Clippers fit I think is probably best case scenario. But I have another team in there that I've seen a little bit. How do you feel like the how do you feel about the Miami Heat? I was literally, as you're saying that, looking at somebody's mock trade um, to get hard into Miami. That is a fit, to be honest with you, that I think is better than either of the two that we just talked about. Because to me, it fits that it fits what we've been saying the Heat are missing, right? Because mm-hmm. then it automatically moves Jimmy back to secondary scoring option. Right. They have a, a guy who can be the primary ball handler, and that's not going to really disrupt too much of their offense. Uh, a James Harden Bam pick and roll elevated, right? That is going to be we know what how he operates in the pick and roll. I think that that would be great for for everybody involved. Does Harden fit Heat culture? I, I don't know. He fit Miami, I tell you that much. He's gonna be. <laughs> he definitely fit he, Miami. He fit Miami. <laughs> um, but what do the what do the Heat give up in this? Like. All of this to me feels like it goes back to, well, okay, if I'm the 76ers, right, and I'm about to trade my second star, am I not gonna? I'm not getting a star back. So then, okay, if I'm going, you know, young depth players, why would Joel and B want to stay here? So you, mm-hmm. they need to tread very, very carefully, carefully, because. And obviously, all of this is just rumors and speculation. But if you're Joel Embiid, right? And granted, this is a Bleacher Report mock trade, so these are not always the greatest. But I'm looking at one here that has their first round pick this year in Jaime Jaquez, Kyle Lowry, a first round swap, and two other first round picks for Harden. If I am Joel Embiid, and that is the type of return we just got for Harden, I'm straight. Like, for real, like, what are we doing here? Like, right. that is not a contending team in the East. Just yeah. that's the reality of it. So, if you're going to move Harden and you're not going to get a guy like Bam back because the Heat wouldn't let him go, you're definitely not going to get Jimmy back in Philly. So, where does that put your franchise? Like, you, are you really going to hit the hard reset and go back to tanking? After you just tanked the in, almost the entirety of the 2010s, I would not want to be Daryl Morey. You are in a very, very tough position right now and need to tread very, very carefully. Right. Uh, because not just for you know your own sake and trying to keep the reigning MVP of the league happy, but Philly fans are ruthless. They and are I, ruthless. could you imagine if they had to go into a full-on reset again after... And- what they did from like 2010, 2011, all the way to like 2016. You can't put them through that again, bro. You can't openly tank, openly be the worst team in basketball for years, admitting that you're trying to lose. Because oh yeah, later down the line, we're gonna get it. It's gonna be all worth it when we're a dynasty, when we're winning championships, and don't even make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Come on, and then you go, and then 
you trade your second star then you trade this superstar who is basically the face of the process like he is the prize to this whole thing just one mvp then he asks out and then you go back into a rebuild you like it, it, you just can't do that man like you can't, you can't do that you gotta do something i don't know what you're gonna do but you gotta do something